Thanks for tuning into the channel. Yesterday I did the uh, valve adjustments and today uh, I'm planning doing the oil and filter change. I think since yesterday it was 493 kilometres. I've been out now and give it a bit of a ride to see how it performs and I think we can look at now it's done 545 so I've done roughly a bit over 50 k's or 30 mile. If we look at it I've got no oil leaks or that around the head area from where the gasket was changed so that's good it's clean either side so uh, we'll get on to the uh, oil and filter change so guys let's take a look at the slab apart me bike on and we'll swing around to a spirit level I've got there zoom in on it you'll see it's dead level and if we sw swing around a bit further and up to the bike to the sight glass and you'll see after 500 kilometers my oil level still up at the full mark and therefore the bike hasn't used any oil in the first 500 kilometers and if I'm about to do an oil change and filter change I could bring whatever drain whatever oils in the bike put the same amount back in and just see exactly how much it holds I've decided to use Silkaline Pro 4 10W50 and the reason for that is you know uh, they reckon you're supposed to use a fully synthetic oil in this particular bike and I've uh, heard from reports this is basically a pretty good oil pretty hard to get here in Australia and pretty expensive so to give you some idea the uh, four litre container or if actually the one gallon which is under a four litre container here in Australia worked out at $110 plus $30 to freight it so $140 to purchase the oil and $30 for the filter so you have no choice here you uh, can only buy the filter off a Enfield dealer here so all up $170 to buy the um, oil and filter only time will tell what it's like. Uh, one of the reasons I went for this Silkaline is I've been having a few slight problems going from uh, fifth to sixth gear and striking neutral. So uh, I'd sort of watched a couple of YouTube videos where they reckon this oil, or one uh, video in particular, reckon that this oil helped solve uh, neutral problems going into gears. And I thought I'd put this in this bike and just see how it performs like that. But in the meantime, since I've lowered my gear shifter from 31 centimetres to 29.5, I've eliminated quite a lot of the false neutrals going into six anyway, so um, it's too late to um, see if that was the problem because I've already bought the oil and took several days to get here. So either way, this oil's in there and uh, it might be in there for just a one hit or it might be in there for future runs, so uh, time will tell on that one. Let's get that oil out. Not totally, I don't want any rubbish to go on the top, I'll just let it say it's not a vacuum lock. And when you have a close look, there appears very little there. No rubbish on the tip of the magnetic plug. Okay, guys, next up we'll get the filter. Mine wasn't on there very tight to start with, so I can just really uh, get her off pretty quick.
Yeah, I'd actually watched a couple of videos where the uh, filter on some bikes was on very tight, but in my case, uh, I was expecting a lot of trouble getting it off, but it was fairly easy to uh, release it with the grips, and after that, surprised me. When putting your sump plug back in, take it easy, because I've found that it comes out easy, but it's a little bit of a on a little bit on the uh, hard side to start the thread to put it back in so take it easy and uh, don't rush into it or you could end up with a cross thread or something in that line so that's the best advice I could give you on that one doesn't thread in the matter like some of them where you can just get into it put the plug in and thread in not the case I was actually a bit concerned there for a moment but I thought maybe I was um, maybe I thought I had a cross threaded uh, one from the factory but uh, all good it was just I don't know maybe stiff in the thread or something like that but So hey guys, keep that in mind. Take it easy on that one. Okay, I've cleaned up this surface now where I'm going to fit the new oil filter. That part's cleaned up, ready to go. Pour a bit of oil into the container. This is how I usually do all of them anyway, so... Do a bit of a pre-lube on this side. The other side's already been dried out on the bike itself. I actually like to pour a little bit into the filter itself. At least by the time that's on the bike we get the other stuff in on that first kicker that filter rule should be uh, nice and damp by that time soon I'm going to spin it around a few times compared to a dry filter okay so the filter is a very simple thing to spin on so I'll just run her in it's wound up against it now and I'll just I'm only going to do a hand tighten on this. And I think I'd like to try it on that one. Just see how it goes on a five minute warm up at a later date. Now an Aussie three litre milk container comes in handy for pouring oil in to see how much actually comes out of the bike. So we'll pour it in. See what we get. That's the sausage dog in the background playing with its toy. Looks like close on that three litre mark is going to come out of this boat. You allow for uh, what was in the wet filter. Yeah, so um, put that aside for a sec. So when you look here, looking into the pan, it's pretty clean. Clean as in no metal, really. One time you thought I'd look back through my videos and see what comes out of some of the other infills. Okay, so what I usually do here if I'm doing an oil change on another infill, I would get up here like this. Put a mark along here. That'd be the guide. 
like so how much oil come out of it what I do with this oil now put it in a uh, an old oil bottle I've got there from one of the car ones I do I want to get up to around about a full container of or a couple of four litre containers I've got a friend down today and there's a local garage down there and I just give it to him and he takes it away with all his other oils from the garage and they go to the recycle depot so it all goes away and is uh, disposed of environmentally friendly now back to this one here uh, so I would say that's up to that stage and I would reckon it'll probably come up a little bit higher to there most likely so I could safely put in I think that much oil straight up on the bike and just see kick it over after that and see how it goes anyway guys I've filled it up to the level with this uh, highly expensive jungle juice we can uh, Fill her up. So this is exactly the measurement what come out of it. We got this cap on. The oil filters tighten. Sump plugs on and tighten can account the motor hasn't been started so what I'm going to do now is give her a bit of a warm up for a few minutes come back and check it but that's the exact amount of um, oil that was pulled out of the bike same amount that went back into the bike the bike hasn't been moved since it was dropped here because when I'm doing oil changes I never do any uh, Oh well actually never leave the key in the bike in case you do a dry start and blow your bike up so just to be on the safe side so we'll kick her over. Really pretty hard to tell from where the tripod is up higher but it's on just above the low level now so I'm gonna add 50 mil see how it comes up if it was spot on before and allow for a, a little bit more in the oil filter from uh, when it was first taken out we'll see if that makes much difference okay guys just back from the run 569 on the clock Everything appears good, no oil leaks. All good. Here's a new oil level up to 25 kilometer run and a 10 minute rest. Still a really windy day out here in the uh, Tablelands in New South Wales, so I was really unable to tell on that 25 kilometer run how good that oil was compared to the stuff I had in it. I think we'll just have to wait till the weather clears up and I can take the bike on a longer run and then test it under better conditions. That concludes the oil, oil and filter change on this bike and uh, next up will be the exhaust and it will come in the next few days. So once again thanks for tuning in, taking a look.